Well, let's go on to the more complex one. Do you want to sort of take us down the route there? You know, what, okay, you've just you've built the foundation. Now, sort of start building to sort of the more complex version for us. Okay, so so th there are a number of ways of um, building out more complex applications in, in UI five. Um, in the last but one um, release, or sort of the the, the free. Uh, trial developer release 112 that was available on SCN, um, there was a lot of good documentation about the application-based um, development. So there's a concept of an application file, and the application file has, has, has a number of definitions and bits of configuration and so on. Um, in 116, which is the, the release that's currently available on SCN, I'm looking at it right now actually, um, uh, there's a new uh, or a newish um, approach, which is called the component-based approach to application development. So um, that's that's the thing that um, uh, Wave 2 Fury apps uh, will be developed in, or are, are developed in, sorry. And that's the way that we're trying to encourage people to uh, consider when they're thinking of building complex applications. So we have the idea of a component, which is a, you know, a set of reusable uh, things. So everything from model definitions, views, controllers, uh, utility functions in, in, in JavaScript and so on, all bundled up in a nice package in a set of subdirectories, and then controlled by uh, this component. And that component can be then uh, run freestanding, or it can be, in, be embedded in a more complex application. But I think the key thing is that um, if you're building out a, a more complex application, then you, know, you want to start looking. I've already mentioned this. Um, you want to start looking at the, the MVC approach. So you want to start sort of separating your concerns and and building your views and having your controllers do the, the handling of the events and so on, and, and 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 so it goes from there. And it just so happens that you know, when, you know, here's, here's one we prepared earlier, as it were. It just so happens that um, especially for this talk, we've got a video uh, that I recorded um, not uh, two hours ago, um, taking us through what a Fury app looks like, um, what. Uh, what really makes up a Fury app? And, you know, what are the component parts? Maybe the components are wrong, a bad word to use there. What are, what are the the uh, inherent parts of uh, the Fury application from a look and feel perspective? So we examine that, and then we sort of flip the flip the lid and have a look at the index.html. We have a look inside the component.js, and we have a look inside the the first app view, and then um, we have a look at the master view as well. So it gives you a, a you know within ten minutes, it's only ten minutes long, eleven minutes long. It gives you a um, a nice feel for what a Fury app looks like and actually how it's built and, and how it all fits together. Okay, well, let's run that video. Thanks for supplying it, and we'll be back in a second. Okay. Okay, so here's a little look at a custom Fury app. Like all Fury apps, um, it's written with SAP UI5, the uh, UI framework. And um, it's uh, pretty uh, pretty standard looking for the moment. Uh, we can see that we've got a, a split app, which consists of a master view and a detail view. In the master view, of course, we've got the idea of um, our items here that we're going to select in a list. And then once we select an item in the list in the master view, uh, the corresponding item information is shown, is, is slid into place in the detail view. All of the um, controls that we see, apart from one, uh, which we'll come to shortly, uh, are in the sap.m library of the SAP UI5 framework, and all the Fury apps are written with sap.m controls, um, with, again, an exception that we'll come to. So we have familiar items like the search field, and we've got, uh, of course, the standard list here that sits, of course, within a page. The page has got a footer, and this search field is in the in the subheader as well. The page has got a title. The list contains uh, object list items, which are bound to the entries in the in the model. Uh, the object list item is a really nice way of showing. Um, information about a particular item. The object list item itself contains attributes and statuses with semantic colors. So you can see maybe green there for initial. And over here we've got in the in the detail view, which is also a page, 
a page object, sap.m.page. We've got an object header, which displays very nicely information about a particular object. And then within uh, the middle section, we've got an icon tab filter. Um, which is within an icon tab bar, of course. Uh, we're, we're using that to, to display the supplier address. And it's actually this address here, this address uh, layout, that is using um, a control that's not in the SAP item library. It's a control in the sap.ui.layout library. In fact, SAP UI layout form. And it's a simple form, a way of uh, laying out uh, forms. Down here, oops, down here we've got um, a table, sap.m.table, which is sort of the brother of the sap.m.list. It has columns, and each of the columns uh, can be described separately. The table itself, of course, has a number of items which are bound to uh, another another um, set of items in the model. And we've got a bit more navigation here to a, a further detailed page. Um, over here, well, at the bottom here, we can see we've got um, bars in the footer of each of the pages. So there's a bar in the footer of the master page in the master view, page in the master view. And we've got a button there which brings up a view settings dialog. In the same way, when we click on this button here in the bar in the footer of this page, we bring up a message box. And then we get a bit of a message toast at the bottom to signify success. So all in all, um, you know, pretty standard stuff. and, and the, the Fiori nature is pretty well represented here uh, by the, the look and feel from, from the controls that we're using. Plus the, the default theme, the default uncustomized theme, which is Blue Crystal, which is all this nice and blue and white stuff. Um, I've got an example of uh, this exact same app, um, but run in Chrome where Chrome is simulating an iPhone. And it looks like this. So let's refresh it, you can, as you can see. And there's an idea of write once, run on many devices. So you've got exactly the same app, it's the same URL, of course, and the responsive design nature of a lot of the subdiam controls, including the split app, mean that it does the right thing according to the screen real estate. So um, we've got the same list here in the master view, but here, because we've got not much space, only the master view is displayed. And once we click, once we select, an item we've got a uh, transition to the detail just like we had on the on the tablet or desktop size screen but you can see that also the simple form has adjusted itself to fit in so we've got um, the different components under each other as we have in the items of the table so the delivery date and quantity columns have been shoved to the left hand side uh, shoved below uh, because of space. We've still got the navigation, we've still got all the uh, proof functionality. One interesting thing is that um, the, the dialogues um, on a phone device will stretch to full screen, which is nice. Anyway, enough of that. Let's have a quick look at how this application looks under the hood. I've got my editor here, and of course, like many applications, we start with um, an index.html. Let me just close these up for a second. Uh, the index.html, like any web app, uh, uh, is where we load stuff initially. We have the bootstrap, the UI5 bootstrap, which loads the, the core framework. And we pass a number of uh, parameters. We've got the blue crystal theme parameter here. We're using controls from the sap.m and sap.ui.layout library. So we're going to load up, preload those libraries. Uh, the binding syntax complex allows us to do um, more interesting things when we're binding uh, model properties uh, with the corresponding properties within controls, for example. So you can, you can concatenate stuff from two different properties in one control field if you want to, for example. This resource roots here is basically saying, well, anything that begins with SAP UI demo my Fiori, you're going to find in this current same directory, which is this stuff here. We want to keep the index.html as simple as possible and as small as possible. So uh, that's why we have only three lines here uh, in this script tag. We are using the component concept 
which is a relatively new concept introduced, I think, with 1.16. Uh, it's documented here in the SDK. Uh, you can have a look at it. It's got a, a simple component concept documentation, and then you can go to advanced components. The general idea is that um, a component is a reusable um, uh, chunk of application. So the the reuse reusability means that uh, one developer group can develop a component which can consist of views and controllers and utilities and, and models and so on. And then you can embed that component within another, another application uh, in a completely different um, developer group, for example. You can split up the development like, like that. Uh, a component lives in a container. So that's what this container is here. And we're instantiating the component there. Uh, automatically, it will look for a component.js here, which is, of course, is here, which is here, component.js. The component container is placed in the body, and that's it as far as the index is concerned. Um, let's have a look at the component.js. If you've written JavaScript views before, you might be uh, familiar with this function here, create content. Um, we're inheriting from this UI component um, to create our own component. Uh, there's, there's two types of components. There's a, there's a, a, a component with a visual aspect, as in you can see stuff. And there are also um, components that don't have a visual aspect if you're building sort of services in the background, for example. This, of course, is going to be visual. So we have a create content function to uh, fill in code for. We're creating a view. Uh, we're giving it an idea of app. And it's uh, SAP UI demo my Fiori view app, which, of course, is there, view app. It's a JavaScript view. We'll have a look at that in a minute. And what we're doing is the, is the root view. It's the view um, from which everything else hangs. Uh, we're creating our models. So we've got a JSON model pointing to a bit of uh, test data. We've got an internationalization model, which is pointing to our resource bundles, for the texts for the um, uh, application. So when you see, for example, sales orders or sales order, there was the text that we want to be able to translate into different languages and therefore hold in a resource uh, model, in a message bundle. And we have also uh, quite an interesting JSON model holding de device information, uh, which we can use then logically in Boolean statements in our XML views to decide whether to show or not various uh, controls or parts of controls. Once we've done that, we return the view and leave go and the uh, view is instantiated and rendered. The app view looks like this. There's a create content. We've got the split app, which we can see is the whole thing. There's the split app there. Split there. And we have a master page and we have an empty page, which is the empty page that you see when you first load the app there. And we put that in a shell as well, which we can't see on this screen because the screen is too small. And from there it goes on. Oh, we've got the master view and its corresponding controller. By the way, the master view is in XML, like most of the other views. We've got a line item view, an empty view, which doesn't have a controller. You don't have to have a controller if you don't need one, and so on. You have a utils directory, or we have a utils directory, with formatting functions, for example, grouping functions. So all the sort of custom stuff that you might want you can stick in a util directory. Um, the message bundle, which are these texts here, is in this internationalization directory. And of course, we've got our mock model. So that's really what a non-trivial application might look like, uh, written with the component concept within SAP UI5. OK, so that was the video. Uh, fantastically done. So. Uh... Uh, a nice example for everybody to look at. Uh, I'm really interested in this. So as a developer, what skills do I need to at least have so I can then go ahead and build some of these SAP UI5 Fiori apps? I suppose contentiously, um, the biggest skill or the biggest, the biggest thing you need is, is passion and interest and a bit of time. Uh, anybody, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Um, when you say as a developer, I, I assume uh, that you mean as an SAP developer, as a as a maybe a traditional app developer, like like what I am, as it were, and um, really it's a case of visiting the uh, the space on uh, SCN. There's a dedicated space for the SAP Wi-Fi framework, 
and um, there you can download um, the evaluation package of UI5 version 116. I think it's patch level three at the moment. Um, install that. In fact, I, I've written a, an alternative guide for doing that. Excuse me, which um, I know a number of people have used, and I've sort of forced my friends and colleagues at Bluefin to, to do the same thing. And, and you know, because of that, we can interact and you know, send each other code and share stuff on our internal Git server, and you know, things just work. It's great. Um, so you need the framework. You don't need any design time tools. You don't need Eclipse. You can use your own favorite. You know, if you're if you're crazy enough, you can use Notepad. Uh, use use your favorite editor. Start writing. Take an example. Modify it. Serve it from a little web server locally and see what happens. I think that I think maybe um, one of the one of the worst things you can do is try and do everything at once. You know, have Eclipse running, have all the tools installed, have it deployed from Eclipse and then pushed back to the the app, app stack as the team server. All those crazy things. No, don't don't bother doing that. Just get some HTML, JavaScript, and CSS served from Apache or whatever your favorite web server is. Um, you know, something that you've written in Vim, for example, which I do. Get that working, and everything else will follow. And to be honest as well, if you know, this, this is a UI framework, UI framework, HTML5. So traditionally, you might think, well, you know, is this really for me? You know, my, me personally, I come from originally from Basis and, you know, development, integration, um, you know, troubleshooting, performance tuning, nothing to do with UI at all. Um, but I've taken to this like a, you know, a fish to water. Is that the phrase? Like a fish to water? Yeah. It is, it is, yeah. It is, yes, um, even though I'm not very wet. Uh, and, you know, it, it, it's fantastic. It's so easy to use. Uh, it's, it's very, I, I find it very intuitive. You know, I hardly touch any CSS. I'm not a CSS person. I don't, don't particularly have any huge desire to become a CSS guru. I'm not a designer. But despite that, you know, I'm, I'm um, building SAP UI5 apps like the best of them. Fantastic. DJ, extremely passionate about this subject. Love to have you back again for further Code Talk. Uh, and also, as I mentioned at the start of the Code Talk today, really love to have you back pretty soon to talk about YRS because it's something that I think both of us are really also passionate about, especially with you know trying to get the future of young developers uh, on a really good uh, footing. So thank you again for joining me from sunny Manchester, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for having me. Okay, see you soon. Bye.